Hello, Global Gardeners, and happy Monday. It's November 21st, the beginning of the Thanksgiving week here in the United States, and it's so nice to see you all amidst some crazy snowstorms in the northeast of the U.S., cold weather all over the place, and even some warmth for those of you like gardens happen down in Florida who's getting ready to Put some plants in the ground. It's craziness abounding. And I'm sure Rick in Sydney, who is awake at 3 a.m., is also thinking about putting the plants in the ground very soon, if not already. We're going to be talking about gifts today. And it may seem redundant if you look at the title of today's show, but I think there's a difference in how we can look at gifts for gardeners when we're talking about gardeners you can get gardening gifts and give them to anybody maybe with the hope of turning them into a gardener but gardeners really thrive on not only receiving but giving gifts that are related to gardening so that's what the primary focus today i'm going to give you some ideas of gifts that i've received gifts that i've given gifts that I would like to get, and we're going to try to cover as much of the spectrum as possible from those that are free to those that are quite expensive. And I think you'll be able to find something on that list to either give or receive, or at least give you some ideas for others that might be interested in, in the gardening gifts as well. And along the way, I'll be asking you to share with me your ideas for the best gifts that you've given and the best gifts that you've received as a gardener when it is often a gift from someone who's not a gardener. And that's one of those things that I think is really extra special as we start to enter a time of year that most of us are in gift giving mode. You have a friend, you have a family member that knows you're a gardener and they know that you're interested in gardening. What are they going to get you? This might be your opportunity to give them a few tips to help them out along the way. So help me with that. I'm looking forward to seeing what all you have to say along the way. Patty says, the best gardening gift I have received is my heavy-duty four-wheeled cart. And uh, I, I don't have a heavy-duty four-wheeled cart in this garden, but I had three of them at the Galileo School Garden. I agree with you. Absolutely loved it. I had one that was rated to 900 pounds and I could carry anything and everything in it. So uh, thank you for sharing that, Patty, because I agree with you. I think that's one of those gifts that we often don't think about. And I would put that in the, 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 the low to medium category because you can get a pretty nice four-wheeled heavy-duty cart for between 80 and 120 US dollars. That's the general range that I've seen. You can spend a lot more than that and get really heavy duty, or you can spend less than that and get one that's probably gonna fall apart in a year or two. So heavy duty is a great way to, to look at it. Welcome to Heidi and Jay, of course, our wonderful people helping out as moderators today. Heidi says, I'm giving, a canning book to my neighbor who cans vegetables. Great idea, I really like that. And so as we start looking at the spectrum, I look at books on the, the less expensive side of the gift giving spectrum because there are a ton of books out there and you can often find some of the older books that might be in their second or third reprinting and they're often on sale and you can find them at reduced prices. So a book is high on my list of something to give to new gardeners in particular. They need to build their library. But those of us that have a, a library established already, I let's see, most of the time I buy my own gardening books, but I've probably purchased at least 20 books this year. And I've been doing that for a year, so I've, I have a lot of books. And I am still given books occasionally from a gardener who comes across something that they like, and it fits into my library. 
it's usually a book I don't have yet because we're always discovering these new finds that we can share with each other. And canning is one of those categories you've probably noticed I've been doing more and more preservation videos over the last couple of months because I think harvest preservation is a critical part of gardening. Well, for those of you who have gardening libraries, how many canning books do you have? How many dehydrating books do you have? How many freeze drying books do you have? And so great idea, Heidi, give, give those kind of books to the people who can use those books, or maybe the people who haven't even started it yet, and it'll give them an idea of something they can do with all of the, the produce that they're harvesting and save. And um, Myra says, hi, hello to you in Southern California. My son's classmates and neighbor gave him seeds the other day. They are six years old. Fantastic. And so that as that's actually first on my list that I wanted to talk about today is seeds. If you save your own seeds, and I highly encourage that you do, it's a great gift. And I love this idea, especially at schools, to give the kids the seeds. At the Galileo Garden, we used to get a lot of donations from some of the the, the stores in town at the end of the season, they were told they were supposed to throw away all the seed packets. The, the, the big seed companies, when they distribute the seeds in spring and then the stores sell them, when the season's over, they can't ship them back to the seed company. And the seed companies say destroy the seeds because, of course, they want us to buy more seeds in the following year. But I had relationships with some of these companies, and I received thousands of packets of seeds that were donated for the school garden and every year at this time of year that's what i did i gave seed packets to the kids at the school and when i would go to other schools and visit for various talks i would do throughout the school district i would take bags of seed packets and give those packets out to the kids this is one of those things that you really have the potential to change a life, how many how many gifts can we give that cost nothing, that seriously and literally can affect the future of the person we're giving that gift to? And seeds fall into that category. So I'm so glad that your your classmates and neighbors are in that mindset of giving out seeds, because especially at six years old. Uh, that's an ideal time for them to get interested and started and they can grow something and see the results of their labors. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, good for you. Seeds, seeds are a good thing. And, and also on that, that side of the spectrum, as far as things you can give that don't cost anything, often we don't think of ourselves as a gift that we can give to others. And so, You've, you've, if you're a parent at some point or another, because the schools will often do this, your, one of your children will give you a coupon book that they did at school, and it's good for one coupon is doing the dishes, and another coupon is feeding the dog, and you know, those are, those are fun gifts, and I've received some of those coupon books. Of course, never use the coupons. I just put it into my memory box, and I share those kind of things with my kids as they get older. But you could do the same thing as a gardener. Think about doing a coupon book for your family, your friends, your neighbors, where you offer some of your time to help them out in the garden or to take them to tea or coffee in the morning and just talk gardening. So that's one of those things that that we can be creative as gardeners and still share the gift of gardening. Bohemian Herbology says seeds are my favorite gift. And my daughter gets me flower seeds for my birthday. That's a nice gift. I think of her year after year when I plant, harvest, and admire. And there you go. Yeah, the idea of seeds creating that initial memory, and then you put them in your garden, and, and it lives, that memory, for years and years. So wonderful idea. Earthly spaces. I never know what to give myself, but today I stumbled upon a Symbidian orchid. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a really good looking plant. Good for you. That sounds like a nice gift. I'll, I'm going to be babysitting some orchids here in a few weeks, and they really are beautiful, beautiful plants. Oh, Heidi's got a gorilla cart as well. So uh, 
nice thing. Yeah, Gorilla was the cart that I had at the Galileo Garden. So Gorilla cards, those heavy-duty cards, really are wonderful. Yankee Sister Homestead is with us today. I saw in the garden with Eli and Kate with us today. Uh, and so it's it's nice to have some uh, of the, the the crowd that doesn't get to join us. Riverdale Gardens is with us today as well. Some of the people that are here every week, but others that aren't here very often. And so always nice to have you here as you get the opportunity to join us in talking about gifts. Green Leaf Gardening says, Grow Food for Free is the best book ever. Uh, you know, I don't think I have that book, so I'll add that to my list of things I'll be asking for. So I like that idea, grow food for free. So thank you for that suggestion. Uh, let's see, uh, gardens happen. I like that idea too. I think I need to invest in a label mic for my videos. Any recommendations? And so uh, I, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Actually, in, in my last video, uh, someone asked me about the mic and I gave them the model and uh, all the information about my mic. So if, if you haven't seen that freeze drying video that I did, look in the comments and I mentioned the, the mic that I use. But I've, I've had about four or five different mics over the last few years and I like the one I have now, but um, I'm still trying to find the perfect one. This one's close, but uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head and, the, and what the number is. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in that video that I comment about it. And, and so that's a, so that's a good idea. And, and this falls into that gardening gift for gardeners idea. If you are a gardener who is in the mode that you've started making videos or you're continuing to make videos for your YouTube channel, these are some of those things that fit with the gift giving idea because it's helping you as you grow your own channel. And so a gardening gift for gardeners doesn't necessarily have to be seed or plant or tool related. It can be something as simple as a, a microphone for your videos or a new camera. All depends on who it is that's, that's giving you the gift or if you're buying the gift for yourself. Uh, yeah, broad, broaden your outlook and see if it's something that is outside what we tend to think of as gardening gifts and you might come up with some really good ideas yankee sister says the gorilla card is on her wish list and uh, i i probably need to get one of those too. i use my wheelbarrow for so much in my garden but uh, those those cards really are really are a nice way to to travel in the garden sprig farms in louisiana nice to see you here today Christiane, I made a seed box for my niece. I made little seed bags from paper, painted the plants on it, and wrote a description for handling, and put it into a painted and decorated paper box. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that idea. I wish I was that artistic and creative to, to do that, but uh, at, at, that's, that's one of those things. You're giving your time, you're giving your energy, you're doing the seeds and oh the memories that something like that will create uh i love that idea thank you for sharing that so that's wonderful uh brian earlier had mentioned the book teeming with microbes and now carla is also saying i've been sending out teeming with microbes to my gardening buddies that's a great book and so in the description below for this live stream today i've included a number of links most of them are affiliate links with with companies that, that I've set up partnerships with. But one of them is my link to my favorite books. And Teaming with Microbes is definitely one of the top books I agree with you with you both as far as giving it as a gift. I've given that book as a gift for gardeners who are just trying to get started and understand soil and its benefit. Teaming with Microbes is a great idea. And I put books... Uh, as I said earlier, on the lower end of the spectrum, there are some books that are really quite expensive when it comes to gardening books. And so it's all relative as to the gardener and the library. But when you are selective and you choose those books that really are good ones, they're worth every penny. Absolutely worth every penny. Linda says, gloves are always a great to give and gift, are always good 
always great to give and get. Sorry for that. I agree. I, I did a video a year or two ago where I talked about um, my top gardening gifts and gloves are, are right on that list as well. My daughter, I'm not putting any pressure on her, of course, but every year she gets me gloves and every year I love getting those gloves. And by the time the next season comes along for gift giving, I've worn out the gloves. And so, yes, I agree with you completely, Linda. They are a great gift because for those of us that are in the garden a lot and using our gloves a lot, it's nice to get more gloves on a regular basis. So I'm hoping I see gloves in my stocking this year. And, you know, other things like that, too. I put hats in that category. I think wearing a hat in the garden is, is something you should all be doing. The sun protection is critical. And my hats last about two years, generally, before they get... Um, too stained and torn and worn down by the sun. And so it's crazy when, when you wear the same hat in the garden day after day, you may have noticed it gets worn down by the sun and by the weather over time. Well, imagine what would be happening to your skin if you didn't have that hat on in the first place. Your skin is getting that same damage. So just like I wear gloves to protect my hands, I wear hats to protect my face and head. And that's a nice gift that you can give and and really pay literal health benefits when you give those kind of gifts and hopefully receive those kind of gifts. Jay says, I'm gifting seeds as stocking stuffers for a 72 food bank or for 72 food bank clients. That's fantastic, Jay. I'm glad to hear that. And those free end of season seed packets. There you go. Yeah, if you can find a good source for that, that's a great way to to pass on the gift. And Riverdale Gardens often give seeds as gifts. I'm trying, you know, back to the idea of the creativity, I'm trying to figure out a, a creative, artistic way uh, to do that myself this year because I've been collecting so many seeds and I want to give them out. And so I like, I like the idea of giving seeds, but I like some of these ideas that I'm seeing as far as the, 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 pictures and even handwriting with how you use the seeds and what they're best for. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Rick says plants are often a good gift. As the plant grows, you think of that person that gave it to you even 30 plus years later. They say your mother gave me that plant. Oh, absolutely, Rick. Completely agree. I, 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 you know, it's um, one of those things and, and even though the focus of today is because we're entering a gift giving period, don't limit yourself, any of you, to only giving gardening gifts during a gift giving season. Because when I go to visit my daughter, we will often be standing in her front yard and talking about the plants that are doing well. And many of those are the plants that I gave her as starts for her landscape. And Yes, years and years later, you can still enjoy the memories of the plants and talk about them. And, and I, I just love when those, those nice memories come back because you're, you're there and you're remembering and you have that, that sharing. Even if it is from 30 years past, there's that link in time, which I think is a big part of gardening. Okay, Willie Williams, good afternoon to you in Barbados. I want to say you have inspired me so much and I've learned a tremendous amount from you. Many thanks. I'm 24 and full of passion. You help to exude. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. That's fantastic. I, I, I do this because of those kind of comments. I really do. I, this, this is one of the gifts I like to give is, is getting the people all around the world who have an interest in gardening to develop into a passion for gardening and then start having the confidence to move forward because just like the idea that you 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 have a plant and you share it and 30 years later you can have the memory of that initial planting i think information like this is the same thing so so i hope 30 years from now you will share the story of how Oh, yeah, in the old days, we had this thing called YouTube, and there was this old guy, Gardner Scott, and he really got me into the 
to that mode, that mindset of gardening being important. I was only 24 at the time, but now I'm sharing the information just like he used to. That's a gift. And this is the kind of gift that keeps on giving. So thank you for sharing that comment because I hope I can also encourage you as you get more experience and as you get older that you're going to share your knowledge and share your experiences with all of those who, who come behind you. So uh, I love Barbados. I actually visited, man, it's been a long time ago. I did a, a, a cruise and we stopped in Barbados. That was probably 25 years ago, maybe, um, no, probably closer to, to 22 years ago. But um, anyway, love going through Barbados. I remember eating at one of the restaurants and having flying fish for lunch. And uh, that's, that's fantastic that you're watching, joining with us today. And uh, there's, there's so many. I've had uh, some comments in the last week from gardeners in Kenya, from South Africa, of course, all the, the places that, that you all are from, uh, the Bahamas. I, 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 I try, I, you probably get tired me of me saying this, but I just think it's so fantastic that we all from around the world can share this passion for gardening and that we can share our interests with people who don't know where we live, don't know what we look like, but we can speak the gardening language and communicate. That's a wonderful way to do it. Carla says, I get my aunt gift cards from her local hardware or nursery so she can pick out what she wants or needs. I like that idea, Carla. I, I haven't done that. I've received those kinds of gift cards, but I like that idea. That's a good way to support some of your local businesses, especially your local gardening businesses. And all the nurseries I know of sell gift cards. So if you're looking for that gift for a gardener and you really don't know what they have in their their book library or what they have in their tool shed, yeah, a, uh, a gift card from the local nursery is a great idea. Thank you for sharing that one. That actually was not on my list of things to, to share and I love it. So thanks so much. Sonia says, I'd love a dibber, garden fork, and a stirrupo. <coughs> Three great gifts. And the the dibber I actually don't have, but on a, a gift video or my favorite tools video, I should say. On my favorite tools video, the garden fork and the stirrupo are on my top 10 list. So if you have a gardener in your family and they don't have a garden fork or a stirrupo, you can tell them that it's in my top 10 and they should have one and that can be something you could wrap up. Uh, but the dibber is a nice idea. <coughs> I, I make my own dibbers. And so a, a dibble stick or a dibber, it's, it's usually got measurements on it. And so when you put your seeds in the ground, you'll use the dibber to create the hole at the right depth to then drop the seed into. And there are some really nice, fancy copper dibbers out there that, that would be beautiful to add to your toolbox. And so, uh, or, or to have someone give you so you can add to your toolbox. So yeah, that's a that's a nice list, Sonia. I like that idea. And definitely those are the kind of things that, that would be good to, to use in the garden. Riverdale Gardens, I received a machete from my brother many years ago. I never knew I needed it. It's one of my favorite tools ever since and a great gift idea. Good for you. Yeah, machetes, I have a machete and I haven't used it much. My Hori Hori knife is on my list of top 10 and, and it achieves a lot of the same things as far as cutting and chopping and getting out and using it in the garden. And I'm sure a number of you have Hori Hori knives and love them as well. That's one of those things that uh, it should be in just about every gardener's toolbox. And so that, that starts moving us into that middle category of some of those things that, that we can give and receive as gifts that cost a little bit more, but really are an important part of gardening. And that's the tools that we have in our garden. And so the stirrup hoe, the garden fork, the hori hori, the machete, a good shovel, a good spade, be it a, the four wheel cart or a wheelbarrow, 
do look at those type of things as you move forward in your gardening journey and try to do as good quality as you can afford but but you you definitely do need to start thinking about expanding your toolbox so that you can have those things it makes gardening so much easier too often we garden and we just make do with what we have but if you have the right tool it can make things so much easier and once you find that right tool you'll use it over and over and over again that's the way the stirrupo is for me it's my favorite weeding tool and i've i've used weeding my stirrupos for years and years the one i have now is i think i've had it for 10 years the one before that i wore out because i used it so much I had a lot of weeds but uh start thinking about those tools that you can add to your toolbox when you start thinking about the things that you want to ask for or especially if you're a gardener giving a gift to another gardener start thinking about those tools you have that someone else doesn't have and that might give you some good ideas of something that you can move forward with Karen says my neighbor best friend and I have spoken many times of trying to grow mushrooms so I'm purchasing two kids for Christmas so we can experience experience this together I like that idea the mushroom kits that you can get now you it's a kit in a it's mushrooms in a box it's a kit and most of them are 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 made in such a way that that the inoculated uh, material and there's different types sometimes it's wood chips sometimes sometimes it's like an oatmeal but it's inoculated with the spore of a very specific type of mushroom and you can put it on the counter in your kitchen and they might have a slit where you have to cut a slit in the box or there might be a hole in the box but you keep it moist and you keep it in the corner of your kitchen in a nice warm spot and mushrooms will pop out it's a great gift idea I really like that idea and so especially when you get two kits and share it with your best friend and then compare notes oh I love that idea Karen that that's that's a good one I like that I'm going to probably repeat that in years ahead I really like that as something that can not only improve your friendship but also help improve and and strengthen that gardening bond that it looks like you guys are starting to develop fantastic grandpa gordy morning coffee in my favorite chair topped off with gardener scott helps with all that snow outside i like that idea grandpa gordy so glad you could be enjoying your coffee my snow is mostly melted but i only got about three inches the other day but it's been cold and uh, that's why i have my morning tea and i've been doing a lot of morning tea and cold mornings recently so good for you and i'm glad we can spend this time together uh it, it it's one of those things you know it's morning for me for some of you like rick it's really early morning for some others like jean pierre it's evening but we can still have that cup of tea or cup of coffee and share some time together i think that's really a good idea so shandy's garden says laura from garden answer one of the huge channels she always has lots of good stuff just did a video on gardening gifts that are wrapped up inside terracotta pots I haven't seen that video I thought that was so cute twined it up decorated the top that's a great idea and so uh I I I've done things like that with like giving tools garden tools in a garden toolbox but if you are looking to give seeds or fertilizer packages you know these kind of things that we use in the garden and they need to be replenished and you're looking for a container to give them in that's a great idea use a terracotta pot as the box and then they open it up and you have all the, the seeds and maybe a little bag of soil or some worm castings and then maybe you've got some of that that fertilizer that that goes with that particular plant or maybe it could be used someplace else in the garden yeah all of that in the terracotta pot uh, I like that idea I'll have to look up that video that that is one of those things that you know it's the creativity of gardeners that can really take a simple gift and turn it into something that is is truly a fantastic gift so I like that idea okay urban chicken mama says I decorated 
pothos and aloe vera plants I decorated for the holidays complete with lights and I'll gift the ones that I don't sell they're adorable there you go I like that idea it put some lights on your plants and use them for your own decorations but make extra to give to others as decorations apparently especially with something like an aloe vera plant that isn't traditionally seen as a holiday plant great idea to turn it into a gift for for someone else i like that idea you guys are so full of great ideas well, that's so nice okay let's see i'm i'm trying to see as many of the comments as i can and i know i'm falling behind the mrs marvel says this is a time of year I usually put together little gardening baskets with basics for non-gardeners as a gardener i always appreciate a pair of gloves I have a toddler and three dogs running off with them yeah, I have to be careful. I usually put my gloves in my back pocket. And if I'm squatting next to a bed and working on it, more times than I care to remember, I'll reach back to my pocket to pull out my gloves to pull weeds or what I'm doing. And one or both of the gloves are gone. And I turn around and there's Mala enjoying my gloves. And she thinks it's playtime when I come to get my gloves. So I definitely know how that is. But I like the idea of gardening baskets for non-gardeners because you can get just a seed packet and a little pot and a wrap. And especially if you put some soil in it, you get something like that. And and it's enough to stimulate the the possibilities for that non-gardener, especially if you're willing to give your time and energy to help them grow it, suddenly non-gardeners become gardeners. And I think this is a great time of year to actually foster some of that young and new gardener development because it is one of those things that we can move forward with. And Shandy's Garden says community is the best gift we can give each other, completely agree, giving us a platform. Knowledge is a fabulous love language that shows you care about someone else's life experience. There you go. That's a great way to great way to say it. Bud says on the theme of seeds, give a gardener some unusual seeds or something that you've recently grown for the first time. Wonderful idea. Oh, you guys are so creative. I love this. The the unique stuff. You know, I talk often about experimenting in your garden and trying those new things. A lot of gardeners, especially I think newer gardeners, are still trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And we tend to repeat a lot of what works. And it really is stepping outside your comfort zone to do that experimentation. So like Bud says, if you can give a gift of something that is unusual, but especially if it's something that you've tried and it worked well in your garden, Oh, great idea. I really like that. Her Highness says a quality watering can. You know, that's one of those most understated and underappreciated tools, I think, that we gardeners have. A quality gardening can really does make a difference. And I use my watering can every day. Even when I've got my hose, I'm using my watering can in, in the garden. And so, great, great idea. A quality gardening can tool is is always important and if you can do something like a can that you never even think about definitely move in that direction and and you can also make it a memorable memorable gift so my granddaughters gave me a watering can and it has you know some nice gardening sayings on it and it's the can i use to water my seedlings down in my grow room and Every time I water, I think of it as a gift that my granddaughters gave me. So not only is a good watering can a great gift and something to use in your garden, but you can turn it into that memorable, memorable gift if you paint it or decorate it or get one of those that already has all the sayings that are um, printed on it. Wonderful, wonderful idea. So, okay. I'm going to try to catch up as I'm scrolling down. Uh, Gardens Happen says the Hori Hori they bought was around $22. And uh, yeah, I think that's about, about what I paid, maybe slightly less than that. Uh, but a lot of these tools that we're talking about don't have to cost a lot. 
even for the quality stuff. It really, you can really find some good stuff for, for very affordable prices. Hi, Pat. Thank you for that contribution. Wrapped up my seasonal gig, and now I'm so glad to be back live. It's good to have you back. There's just something about the live chat. I appreciate it. I know there's a lot of you that are probably watching this on replay. And yes, there is just something about the live. It is better to, than, than watching it on replay because we can have that interface back and forth. And so hopefully if you aren't a regular uh, viewer on Mondays and, or maybe you just get here occasionally, uh, I hope you do get the opportunity to join us live because I feel the energy and I know a lot of you do too when we can be here talking live on these Mondays. Okay, Kate Paul has a question, needs some help. I put my garlic in the ground two weeks after the last year's frost, got too warming and it's coming up. What do I do? Cover or pot it and bring it in. Don't You don't need to bring it in. Garlic is very hardy and durable. If you see some of my garlic videos, the, the one that was the full tutorial shows garlic growing in snow. So garlic can handle really cold conditions. Put, in, put on some extra mulch, especially once it starts growing and the leaves start emerging early. Go ahead and cover it with some crushed leaves mixed with straw or some grass clippings and just make sure you're adding extra insulation for those plants during a critical time where the, the new growth is still tender. And if you get some really cold freezing conditions, it can damage those new leaves. So that's why you want to put some some mulch to help cover that young growth. And then just don't worry about it. You really don't need to do a whole lot extra with garlic because it will survive in frozen soil. It just goes dormant. The problem is if it's actively growing, that there's the potential for damage. But as the soil begins to freeze, assuming your winters get that cold like they do for me, the plant's going to go dormant. And some of that green may remain through the winter. Most of it will probably die back, but extra mulch is usually, and when I say extra, I mean like maybe three to four inches of mulch to cover those young plants just so they're not damaged uh, severely until the plant goes into dormancy. So uh, nothing too bad. A lot of people are dealing with that problem right now because there's been a lot of really warm temperatures later than normal. Even with all the, the snow and cold that many of us have had in this last week, uh, for many of us, it's actually later than it normally would be. And so it's been throwing off some of those plants, like the garlic that would normally not be putting up all the green growth. So Doris M, nice to see you. Haven't been here in a while been moving to a new property and now restarting a garden from scratch. Good for you. That's one of those things that, you know, there's a, a few of us on YouTube that have been making videos over the course of the last couple of years where we've moved to a new property and we show the videos as we are starting our garden from scratch. And so my channel, uh, the videos of the last three years, and there are, there are some other channels out there that can definitely help you out when you're in that setting up a new garden mode. I'm not worried about you. You'll do fine. But I think that's an exciting opportunity because you really can move forward knowing what you've already learned. And, and each time I've moved to a new house and started a new garden, it was, of course, better than the garden before. And so I don't necessarily look forward to moving and starting a new garden. But I do recognize that by doing that, it gives you a nice opportunity to do it better this time. That's part of what we gardeners do. It's always better this time. And so good luck to you, Doris. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sure it'll be a wonderful garden. <clears throat> okay, let's see. This is interesting. Sherry is making broccoli sprouts using a kit that I got this past July for my birthday. So cool. Um, broccoli is one of those plants that can handle a lot of cold too. And so especially for those of you that are starting winter gardens because you're in a warmer area and now it's the time that you're starting to put plants out, um, those kind of things like brassica sprouts, like broccoli, I think that's a great idea. So cool. Do it for yourself, of course. But but if you have a gardener friend, think about giving those kind of things as a gift for others. 
Diversity Love, hello to you. I'm learning a lot from your channel. I thought this was interesting and wanted to share. A small heat compost system using a floater, like a toilet floater, to refill and heat water. Interesting idea. I've seen some things like that. I saw one that I almost was tempted to build once that used a solar panel for, um, for the electricity. Uh, but I've seen some of those videos where you use the, the floater and it's all how you hook up the wiring and it will turn things off or turn things on. And, and this is more like the, if, you're, if you're not using a passive heating system, you can actually attach some heaters that might be solar related. But if you have a passive system where you're using water from uh, a, a water barrel that comes from the roof, and you can set up the floater to actually open valves to release water for compost or for the garden. And then when the, the container is emptied, because of the way you set up the floater, it closes the valve and then it refills from rainwater or, or the water barrel that you have. You can get some really complex systems. But yeah, that sounds like it'd be a, a lot of fun. And uh, especially if you tie it into uh, a, a compost system. I could see how, I, I like making things easy. When I had chickens, uh, my coop was as automated as possible. I had the chickens using little water nipples and I just fill up the five gallon container every three or four days and the chickens watered whenever they wanted. And so I didn't have to go out there every day giving them water. And the same with the feed, I built the feed uh, into the wall of the coop and it was fill it once a week and then the chickens eat it and so this falls into that same category if you can work smarter not harder and automate some of what you're doing I think it's a great idea so I've seen some of those videos diversity love and so if that's something that might interest you if you're looking for something new to start in your garden uh, check out some of those videos because uh, it's it's something that is outside the realm of normal and, and normal i don't necessarily mean is a good or bad term but the things we do normally in the garden there's a lot of extra stuff we can try and a a toilet float could be that new thing that you want to want to try rick received a bonsai plant started an obsession till a huge hailstorm destroyed them all i'm sorry sorry to hear that I still have all the pots, so I may start again in the future. Uh, I Yeah, bonsai. I only have one bonsai, and it was a gift. Uh, one of my chief volunteers at the Galileo Garden was really into bonsai, to the point that he actually went to Japan to study bonsai and uh, gave me a plant that I still have four years later, and I would be crushed if it was destroyed in a storm, but I've got it indoors Hopefully I don't knock it over and break it. So yeah, get back into it, Rick. That's one of those things that uh, I I would really like to do more with bonsai because the little bit I've done, I, I really have enjoyed. So definitely, definitely go in that direction. So Mrs. Marvel, if I could ask for something, I'd ask to take a peek in an experienced gardener's journal slash notes. Knowledge is powerful and helpful. So uh, I like that idea. And what I would suggest is do it. Try to track down some of those experienced gardeners. A lot of times they're volunteering at local botanic gardens or they might be volunteering at a nursery, plant nursery, or go to the plant nursery and start asking around about experienced gardeners and then say, hey, do you have a garden journal? Mind if I look at it? I'll buy you a cup of coffee. I bet you you could get some takers on that. And it's and so turning it back around as a gift. If you are an experienced gardener with that journal and you're you have all the information, don't know what to do with it, same thing. Seek out some of those young inexperienced gardeners and offer to take them to coffee and bring your garden journal along and let them take it home and read through it. I, I, I think that's a potential on both ends of the, the table as far as the information that can be given and received. That's, that's a nice gift to ask for. 
and hopefully you can find it. But it, I think it would also be a nice gift to, to give others as well. So, okay, let's see. Andrea says, I'm just finishing digging up my dahlia tubers, cleaning pots and tools and reclaiming potting soil from it. Annuals from uh, annuals and herbs you prep now for seed starting So yeah, I've already started prepping my seed starting. I I'm not going to be starting most of my seeds Until the February and March time frame, but I've already started cleaning up my seed starting area I've already readjusted the lights. I've already started getting my soil ready to go and I've already started getting my seed packets in order as to which ones I'm going to start doing. So I, I think you can't do that too soon. And the better prepared you are, the, the better it'll be when that time actually comes. So uh, you're, you're at the right time of year for cleaning your pots and digging up your, your dahlias. But uh, also think, and so... So when we talk about seeds as gifts, particularly in the winter for many of us, many of these seeds can be sown during the winter. And so not only am I prepping for my seed starting for my indoors seeds, but I'm also going through the seed packets to figure out which ones I'm going to go outside over the course of the next month and start sowing, start spreading, start throwing around. Some of those those seed pots that are still on plants I haven't cleaned up yet, I'm going to grab those seed pods and spread them around my landscape as well. So if you have some of those, like the Cosmos, for instance, I've, I've shown the Cosmos in my videos and you know a few months ago, all the Cosmos that I grew in my landscape this year were from seeds from the Cosmos that I had a whole year before. And so saving something like that, those Cosmos seeds, and then putting them in a seed packet as a gift, and then as we've talked, telling what to do with them, think about giving a, a gift of seeds, and then say, on Christmas morning, go out and spread these seeds. What kind of memory does that create? Now when those flowers pop up in the spring, that's one extra little bit of of memory that creeps into it, especially if you have people in your garden. You say, see these cosmos that are so beautiful in my garden? I sowed the seeds on Christmas Day. How creative is that? I, might, I may not be creative with my artistic paper and painting, but sometimes the creativity does flow. So uh, there you go. Sow seeds as, or you can sow the seeds with the person you give the seeds to, uh, at a time of year when you may not normally think you could be sowing seeds. All depends on the seed, of course, but that's something that might be a little bit different than what you are normally anticipating. So um, the creativity is the key. As, as we look at the spectrum and talk about the spectrum of the, the gifts that, that we're giving, there's, there's the other end. And so this is one of those things that if you want some of those expensive gardening gifts. And I, I made a couple of videos this year, the, the greenhouse in particular and my freeze dryer. I've talked about these are gifts that I've wanted for years and years and years and finally was able to get them this year. If you want a gift like that, start planting that figurative seed now. You might not get the gift this year, but maybe next year or the year after. It can be something that that you have the, the the gift jar. And so every time you, it's like the swear jar. Everything, something happens, whatever it be, you put a dollar in the jar. Or you send a notice to someone else that, hey, I still want this freeze dryer. And eventually, hopefully, you'll get that gift either you buy it yourself or someone gives it to you. But don't think that some of these more expensive gardening tools are out of your reach. It may just take more time and more wishing before it actually arrives in your garden and you can start using it. But there, there were a number of years when I thought, oh, I'll never have a greenhouse. But then I started changing my my mindset, trying to think of it more positively. 
and looked at it as when I get my greenhouse, this is what I'm going to do. Again, it took years for me to actually reach the point where all of this fit into my budget, but it's one of those things that it kind of starts during the gift giving time. And if you get close, so for instance, the, um, the, I have a drone so that I could take videos of my garden and I actually haven't put any of the video I've shot with my drone in any of my videos, but that was one of those more expensive kind of gifts, gardening related, and I didn't get it until I received gift certificates from family members who wanted to make sure I got my drone. And so just by laying the groundwork that you're interested in a particular type of gift is often enough to prompt those family and friends who would be giving you a gift to maybe add to your stockpile of gift certificates so that you can finally receive it. So think about that. Working together is often a way to get a gardener some of those more expensive items that Maybe they wouldn't be able to, to afford, or maybe you wouldn't be able to afford, but you get the family together to get something like that, and, and it really can make all the difference. So just an idea. It depends on, on how you celebrate the holidays and how you give gifts, but it really did make a difference in my case, and it has over the years. Some of the things that I wanted to get, I couldn't get unless someone actually helped me get it. And so that's an important part of... Of, of the gardening journey. Many of them aren't gardeners, but they know that I had that passion and they wanted to share the gift of gardening with me in the only way they knew how. And that might be gift cards, gift certificates, and, and a book that they're giving without fully understanding what it is they're giving, but it makes all the difference in the world for those of us who receive it. So I think that's one of those things to to add to your planning. If, if you put together your Christmas list, go ahead and put some of those big items on it. And every year, keep those big items on it and maybe eventually you'll get it. So hope that helps out a little bit. Amy says, my husband gave me a promise of a greenhouse for Christmas last year. It took until August to get it built due to materials and labor shortages. I'm thankful that I have it now. There you go. Thank you for sharing that, Amy. That's the idea. Is, is, is having the patience, letting it be known, then you get the gift, and then it might be months before it actually finds its way, but I, you're gonna love your greenhouse because your husband made it happen. So it's, it's that, that part of gardening that is just so hard to describe to others who don't think like gardeners, how when I'm out in the garden and I see my plants and I see my greenhouse and I see my flowers, almost everything in my garden evokes a memory of some type. And especially when somebody dear to you is part of that memory, oh, it really can't get much better than that. So, and Bohemian Arbology says, that's how I scored my composter. There you go. That's a great idea. And so Sprig Farm says, took me having an Excalibur dehydrator on my list for three to four years before my husband got it for me. There you go. See, I'm not the only one who, who takes the long view when it comes to some of these things. Excalibur is a really nice dehydrator. So this starts moving us into that category of really nice things to have as a gardener. And they're a little more expensive. I have an Excalibur dehydrator. It wasn't my first dehydrator. I started with one of the, the inexpensive dehydrators and worked my way up over a period of years to an Excalibur. But it's a great brand, and I've used it for years and years and years. And yes, it's more expensive, but it's high quality, and it, and it, it actually will pay for itself depending on how much you use it. Uh, in, also in the description below, the those links I said I was going to to have. They're, they're already there now. This is a time of year when you can start finding some really good sales on a lot of these things we're talking about. And so, for instance, green stock. I've got 
three green stocks now. I may add a fourth one this year. We'll see. Today, green stock has a sale that has just started as a Black Friday sale. And there are a lot of these type of sales that are starting to pop up. Some of them, for some of the products that I like and use, are in the descriptions below. And all you have to do is start looking around and you may start discovering some sales over the course of the next couple weeks for some of these, these tools and the supplies that you're looking for. The Harvest Right freeze dryer, which, which is about the only freeze dryer on the market, is extremely high quality. But of course, that puts us on the expensive end. They've got a sale through the end of the month where you can save $500 on a freeze dryer. I've never seen a sale like that, but it's happening right now. The seed companies, a lot of the seed companies are right now having sales tied to the Black Friday uh, events that'll be coming up in just a few days. So, so start looking for those kind of savings and you might be able to come across something for a gift you were planning to give and you were thinking about getting it in three or four weeks, if you get it now, you might be able to save 10 or 15 or 20%. So throw that in into your planning as you're, as you're looking at gifts, or if it's one of those, those gifts that costs a little bit more, if you find that deal and you know that your husband or your wife or your family is likely to get you that gift, let them know that there's a sale going on and that they can save 10, 15, 20%, whatever it happens to be. So, so don't be afraid to, to buy things and save money with the, the Black Friday time of year. And, and I do that for myself. I bought myself garden tools on, at Black Friday sales six months before I'm planning on using the tool, but it's because I can save some money. So, okay, let's see, let's get back to it. Yeah, Shandy says Amazon already has the Black Friday deals now. Lots of stores do. I've got a link. I don't have an Amazon store, but I do have a link to Amazon below. It's an affiliate link. So if you want, if you're gonna be doing shopping on Amazon, you can use the link that I have in the description of my videos, uh, and this one too, if, if you look down below. And I, I get a small percentage to help the Gardner Scott channel. If you are shopping it on Amazon and you click through my link, it actually does benefit the, the channel and allows me to, to make some videos on some of these products that I wouldn't normally be able to, to make on. So um, it's, it's a relatively shameless plug, but if you are looking to, to help support the channel, that's one of those things you can do is to uh, go through it and or go through my link and that will help you out in the future uh, because you get what you want you haven't paid anything extra for it and it helps me out to enable me to do some of these videos that, that I've been wanting to do and am now finally able to do so just a thought might help you out a little bit uh, there you go there's Jay right on top of things with that affiliate link to Amazon I appreciate appreciate that Jay you are, I've seen you do a few of the other links already today and you are always on top of it. So, so wonderful. Britt says, I'd love to have a dehydrator in the future. Not experienced enough yet, but I'd love to be able to preserve herbs. And so herbs are one of the easiest things to, to start your preservation journey with. And I've got a video uh, that I did last year on drying herbs. You can cut your herbs and, and most herbs you can air dry and you've started dehydrating. Once you start doing that, it's an easy step to then get a dehydrator. And, and again, like I said, I got the, the inexpensive dehydrator for starting off and began drying things as just experimentation and finding out what worked and what didn't work. I've made a lot of jerky over the years, but I've also dehydrated mushrooms and tomatoes and a lot of things from the garden. So, so don't be afraid. Go ahead and get it. I think just about every dehydrator you get is going to have a book that tells you how to dehydrate different things and then go for it. 
And before you know it, you'll be like a lot of us that are hooked on the preservation of our garden. And you might work your way up to another dehydrator. You might keep the one that you start with. But I say go ahead and do it. Uh, if it's in your future, make the future now. And so share with those of you or those in your family who might be looking for a gift for you and say, boy, I'd love to have a dehydrator this year. You never know. You might get it. Dehydrators, uh, I have the two. I don't use the inexpensive one as much as I used to because my Excalibur, I think it has five trays and it's more than enough for what I need. But when I'm busy with big dehydrating, I, I'll bring them both out. And that's the problem with dehydrating and, and finding with the freeze drying too, is once you start doing it and you like what's happening and the results, you just keep doing more and more. Blue Petunias, hello. I finally started on my YouTube channel with gardening and such. I've been doing Instagram for a couple years with it and looking to finally grow support. Any advice off the cuff? So glad to hear that you're you're moving in that direction. There, there are a ton of channels out there that tell you how to get started on YouTube, how to grow your channel on YouTube, how to do this, how to do that. The, the advice that I would give, my son has a YouTube channel and he and I talk about this all the time, is just make videos. And and I know a number of you, like Gardens Happen is doing great. Gardens Happen is, is, is releasing regular videos. And that's what I think is really the key to, to eventually grow your audience. I don't think growing your audience really should be a goal for most people that are starting off with a YouTube channel or just beginning to grow their YouTube channel. I think what's most important is just doing it, just making the videos so that you become more comfortable making videos so that you identify what your what you feel best about, what what it is you're portraying in your videos. And it takes time to figure that out. I it if you go back and I know some of you are doing this because I, I'm seeing the regular comments from one video to the next video to the next video. And so I love some of you who are binge watching my Gardner Scott videos. But if you go back just a few years, you'll see that the videos I have now are completely different than the videos I did five years ago. Because I've learned over the course of five years how I want to convey my information and how I want to demonstrate it and how I want my videos to look. And my videos are different than everyone else's videos. And hopefully that's part of what you'll find out as you make more and more videos is you've got to be who you are and your video should be unique to you. Don't copy anybody else. Let everybody else be who they want to be. You, you're, you're never going to be James Prigioni running to the screen, pointing at the camera with all the energy that he has, probably because you don't live in New Jersey and you don't look like James Prigioni. In fact, just be who you are in the way you want to be. And that's the best way to start. A good friend of mine started a YouTube channel a couple years ago and he was concerned about his own image and what, how he was going to portray himself. And so he created a person that wasn't him, a name that wasn't him, an energy level that wasn't him. And he only made three or four videos before he got burned out because it was just too much work. Just be yourself, do what you want to do as often as you can do it, once a week, twice a week, once a month, but if you can make videos with regularity, you'll become more comfortable making those videos. And then it'll lead to more success with you and whatever it is you're hoping to get from your, your channel. So I hope that helps Blue Petunias. You just, you just got to make videos. And, you know, there's the argument of quantity versus quality. Well, I think with quantity comes quality. So the more videos you make, the better they will get. And the better your videos get, the more likely people will be to watch them. And the more people that watch, the more your channel grows, the more motivated you get to make more videos, and then you get sucked into 
the YouTube creator world and all you want to do is just make more videos because you love doing it. And that's kind of the mode I'm in right now. And it was five years ago, just about this will be this next year. I think it'll be five years that I dedicated myself every week. I'm going to make a video and some of those older videos I don't think are that great. The information is good. I just don't think I look that good or I don't talk as well as I'd like to. And it was about video number 75 for me where it started clicking and I got comfortable and I really became Gardner Scott the way I like Gardner Scott to be. So just get out there and do it. And that's one of those things I think will, will eventually pay off if, if you do have some consistency. Bohemian Herbology Natural Solutions. Thank you so much for that super chat. I do appreciate it. It's, it's always welcome and so glad to see you here on such a regular basis. Brian says, I made him really miss fresh grilled zucchini. My zucchinis have been gone for a while now. And so, you know, this ties in with food preservation. I did the video where I freeze dried zucchini and then fixed it. And I grilled some of my freeze dried zucchini, learned a couple lessons along the way. But Brian, it was delicious. The, the skin was tough. I'll do it differently next time. But that's the nice thing about preserving your harvests. And that's, I love my freeze dryer because I'm enjoying some of those things now that I can't tell you the last time I enjoyed zucchini from my garden in November. And you saw it on that video. So uh, put that on your, your planning for next year, Brian, to maybe figure a way that you are comfortable preserving that the zucchini in particular. The freeze drying works pretty well. Uh, the dehydrating will also work. Freezing also works. You do lose the consistency. So far for me, the freeze drying is, is the best way to preserve squash and zucchini. Um, I shot, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a video about it. I've shot some footage because I freeze dried yellow squash and, and it turned out great. And, and last night, for instance, last night for dinner, um, I, I fixed some cauliflower and some onions and some zucchini with the zucchini that I had freeze dried. So preserve your, your harvest and whatever method works best for you, if you can find a way to use it. it the zucchini was really good last night. So I don't mean to rub it in, Brian, but uh, I really am happy with my freeze dryer being able to, to enjoy the, the zucchini because it, it really is tasty. So before I forget, let's talk about the background today. Um, so this comes from Susan Minshaw. And <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I said this last week. I, I tried to, to, to stress the idea that when you, you see someone else's garden, try to learn from that garden. And so you, you may have been looking at, at this and uh, hopefully you may have picked out a few things that you've observed from the background today. So I'll point out a couple things and see if maybe you picked up on some of the same stuff I picked up on. So it's kind of hard to see, but if you look down here, that's a puddle of water. And if you look over here, right next to their garden buddy, you've got water. And so all along the edge here, right at the edge of their patio, uh, their deck, just behind my shoulders, that whole area is underwater. I had a lot of rain and, and the water pooled there. I've said this in a number of my videos, when you are starting your garden or starting to expand your garden, you should take time to observe your landscape so that you put your garden in the best possible location. And so as I look at this, you can see that this is a hill. It's higher up by the shed than it is down by this deck. And where do they have their gardens? Even though the ideal spot for the garden would probably be like right here. This looks like it's probably in full sun. That also looks to be the lowest spot in their, their backyard or front yard. I'm guessing this is the backyard. So this is probably the lowest spot in their yard. As far as walking out the door, stepping off the deck and harvesting your garden, you would think that's where you want your garden, right outside your back door. But when you live with a hill and a lot of water drainage, that's not 
where you want to put your garden. So instead, you put your garden farther up the hill so you don't have that, that problem. Or you put it at the top of the hill so that you don't have that issue with the water pooling. And then you do things like raised beds. And they don't have to be really high raised beds, just high enough to improve the drainage so that the soil isn't saturated. So I, I like the layout that, that they have in this landscape. It's, it's simple, but it is quite effective. You plant in the high, let the water drain down, and wherever the water pools, you don't plant. And so down in this lower section, of course, it looks like they've got, those, are, those look like they could be hostas, but they've got their hostas in a little planter. This is probably a shaded area, hostas like the shade. So my guess is this is a shaded area and it gets a lot of the water drainage. And so you don't have the flower beds or the plants growing right next to the deck. They're farther up on the hill. That's, this is, a, this is a wonderful example of why I say, take time when you move into a new house and you're starting a new garden, take time to figure out what happens in your landscape. Because you might move into you know, a place like this with all these beautiful trees and you say, I want a garden. And this area where the lawn is, is probably in full sun. And so you want to get started, you put your beds and you think, I'm going to put my beds just outside my back door, right on the edge of the deck. If you do that during the dry season, when you might have lots of sun, everything's great. If you didn't wait a year and go through a wet season to see where the drainage is and what the effect is on your landscape, you may have made a mistake by putting your garden into the wrong location. So thank you, Susan, for sharing this. I'm not sure if that's the lesson that you wanted me to get from it, but that's the lesson I see that you spent some time figuring out where the garden was going to go so that it was in the best location. And then, of course, you've got your chair so you can sit. I, I always love seeing the benches and the chairs of gardeners who can just sit and observe and enjoy their garden space. And so it definitely looks like you're doing that. So thank you, Susan, for sharing this. Of course, there's hoops and then there's the fabric to protect the hoops. And there's a table with pots. We showed this last week where especially if you're in a wet area, you elevate your pots off the ground so that they have the good drainage. So uh, some of the similar things that we talked to or we talked about a week ago, but also some new stuff that I wanted to share with you today. So have just a couple more in the queue. I'm looking for your garden pictures, especially as we move into fall and winter. Or Rick, I'd love to see what you're doing, Rick, as you're starting to move into your spring. And we can throw those in the background and talk about it. And all of us can learn from what you're doing in your garden. I think it's always good. So Gardener Scott at GardenerScott.com is where you can send your pictures. And as long as you give me permission to use it, I'll I'll throw it in the background if I can if I can get it to fit. Thank you, Sista. Always nice to see you here. So thankful for this community. Please, everyone, have a safe and memorable Thanksgiving holiday this weekend. Thank you so much for those sentiments. And I agree wholeheartedly. This is a fantastic community. And it's people like you, Yankee Sister, that helps make it such. So always nice to have you here. And Riverdale Gardens, I, I will point out, they, they get to visit us about once every six weeks. So it's always nice to have those of you that aren't here very often that can be. So, okay. So I'm trying to catch up again. I see some other stuff that I have missed out on. The Yeah, this is our Thanksgiving week. And so before I forget... I'm actually going to be doing some traveling. So next week, I will not be here on Monday live to do the normal live stream at the normal time. So Rick, you get to sleep in. You don't have to get up so early. Get some good sleep. I will be back the following Monday per normal. That'll be December 5th. Just checking to make sure. December 5th in two weeks, I'll be back. But I won't be here next week. So... If you're watching this on replay, and especially for those of you that are live right now, 
make note on your calendar. I will miss you all. And I know all of us will miss each other, but just be aware if you show up next week, I won't be able to do it. And I, I will actually physically be traveling. The last time I, I did a trip, we talked about, you know, maybe trying to do this on the road, but I'm actually going to be literally on the road during this time uh, next week. So we'll hopefully it'll be, uh, like Jay says, a reminder, no live stream on November 28th, next Monday but we will be back on the 5th. So um, it's one of those things that it's, I'd, I'd love to do this every day. I definitely want to do this every week. And so when I don't do it, it's like a piece of me is lost. And so I really do appreciate you all so much. And so believe me, I'll be thinking about you on Monday and anxious to get back in two weeks. And uh, I, I know a lot of you kind of have some of those similar thoughts. Okay, let's see. Sherry says, watch not only what but whom. I've had to reconcile myself to the idea that I share my acreage with all manner of wildlife. I used to be a wildlife rehabber, so I'm not complaining. Uh, good point, and I think you're probably talking about the uh, observations of the garden because that's definitely on my list when I when I make videos about planning a garden. It's not just the water drainage and the weather patterns and the sun that's that's an important aspect what the animals are doing in your landscape and even when you take the time to do it it may not always be enough time so like my current garden i i spent a year figuring out where i was going to put my fruit trees picking the best spot for my pollinator gardens i put my vegetable garden in relatively quickly because I, I identified the most important aspects to that. And the first year I had my fruit trees in, everything was great. It wasn't until the second winter that the deer discovered my garden. And so I was looking for those kind of patterns with the wildlife, didn't see them, kind of got a little lackadaisical with my approach and lost some trees to the animals in my area. So. This is, a, this is a continual aspect of gardening. Take the time to put your garden in the best possible location, but then also recognize that you might need to modify some of how you garden and where you garden because of the pests that might actually find your garden. So I'm, I'm using a lot more netting and fencing than I originally had planned to because of the the uh, wildlife that's in my garden. So definitely think about those kind of things as you are planning and preparing and building your, your garden space. Sherry says, I lost my first four fruit trees before I knew how brave the little deer are. Exactly. <clears throat> and it's the young deer. It's, it's those young bucks that are doing most of the damage in my garden because uh, maybe they're not as afraid as they should be. I, 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 I took video, I take video of a lot of things in my garden, of course, and I'm not sure if it'll ever make it into a video. I've been trying to figure out how to do it, but I've been taking video of, of Mala running out and scaring off the deer. And there was one day in particular, a young buck wasn't scared off and he lowered his head and I had to rescue Mala from the potential damage that this buck was going to inflict. So I think some of the older deer are scared off by dogs and people, but some of the younger ones aren't. And uh, keep your fingers crossed if you have a, a garden with deer in the area that you don't lose the fruit trees. At the Galileo Garden, th so this garden was, was completely fenced in. It had been tennis courts. So a 10 foot high fence all the way around. And I put fruit trees in that garden. They were were taking off. Actually, a video I made about six years ago, planting bare root trees, was at the Galileo Garden, and I was planting fruit trees, and they they started doing great. I retired and moved on to retirement and my home garden, and went back to visit about a year, I think, after I had retired from the Galileo Garden, and the fruit trees were devastated because a homeless person had discovered the greenhouse, had cut the fence, chain link fence, had cut the fence so they could get into the greenhouse to sleep in a warm environment. 
Well, you're probably wondering what this has to do with deer. That chain link fence that was cut had not been repaired before the deer discovered that there was an opening into the garden and all the fruit trees were eaten down to nubs by the deer that worked their way through a gap in a chain link fence that someone had cut. So, you know, terrible end to those fruit trees, but deer really can devastate your plants. So be careful about those kind of things. And, you know, speaking from experience, sometimes you don't learn about it until it's too late, which really makes it sad. Andrea Cadera, thank you so much for that super chat. Have a happy Thanksgiving and safe travels. Gardner Scott, thank you. I appreciate that sentiment. And to all of you as well, they're forecasting some crazy travel numbers here in the United States for Thanksgiving. So all of you, if you're traveling, be safe, take it slow, take it easy, get to where you're going in a nice, safe manner so that you can enjoy yourself as much as possible. And of course, have as wonderful a time. Thanksgiving, for those of you that don't know, Thanksgiving here in the United States is a holiday that we get together and it's, it's, it's usually family focused. And so the idea is that we're traveling to be with family or family is coming to be with us and we have a big dinner and we get stuffed and most of us watch a football game on TV and we play games and we tell stories and we often will share a gift, but especially as often the tradition in my household, we share stories from all the past Thanksgivings and other times as as they pop up in conversation. So so this is a nice time of year and it's the beginning of the 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 holiday gift buying. So usually it's this time of year right after Thanksgiving when all of these Black Friday sales hit and people start getting into buying mode for Christmas. And so that's that's why uh, we kind of have this theme for today because this is the Thanksgiving week. And if you're traveling, be safe. And if you're meeting with family, have a wonderful time. And and even if you're if you're not in a big family situation, I hope you do have the opportunity to to in, enjoy yourself in these times. And and whether you're alone or maybe just with a small group, know that if you're part of the Gardner Scott community, you're part of a family. We are all here for all of us. And this really is a big family. So if you're looking for things to be thankful for, that's one of the things many of us do on Thanksgiving is say what we're thankful for. Be thankful that you're part of this wonderful gardening community and that that we're all on this journey together. So that kind of touches with some of the philosophy stuff I was going to talk about here in a couple minutes, but uh, it, it all ties in with Thanksgiving. And for as many of us as possible, on a day-to-day -day basis. Live the gardening mindset and your days will usually be better. So, Dusty Flats did have deer get caught in hog wire on neighbor's fence. Not good. Make sure the fences are tight. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, hog wire um, is, is a really sturdy steel. I bet it caused some damage. I had put up some bird netting uh, at my last house to try to deter there was an area that I saw that the deer were walking through a pathway. And so I had my house, I had the downspout off the gutters, and I had a tree. And so I, I ran some wire and some bird netting between the tree and the downspout, thinking that the deer would be walking through, come across this barrier, and go someplace else. What ended up happening, I'm guessing, is that at night when I heard the ruckus, a deer had been running through that path, got caught in the wire and the bird netting, tore it all apart, actually tore my downspout off the, the wall of my house, and they disappeared with a lot of the wire and everything that I had set up. So hopefully the animal was okay, but that, you, you do raise a good point. You have to be careful when you put some of those barriers in place to keep some of those, those pests away. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Sandy's Garden says, if you put two rows of short fence 
and use it as a chicken run, you get two-in-one benefit. It tricks the deer and helps control little pests too. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, some of those, you know, there's little tricks for deer. Fences don't need to be tall. They just need to confuse the deer. And so if you've got two parallel fences of different heights, that's often enough to, to keep the deer from jumping over them, even if they're a low fence. And so using it as a, as a double duty chicken run, I, I like that idea. That's, that's a way to kill two birds. So, okay, let's see. Sherry says, I found that Mylar ribbon and pieces of Irish spring soap discourage deer and pretty much everything else. <coughs> it's Irish spring soap, you know, it's the strong aroma of the soap um, that can make a difference. They can get used to it in time. Uh, my, my wife made a lot of different types of soap and was always looking for experimenting. And I actually had her mix me up some soap that was similar to Irish Spring. And I used that in at, as a deterrent for, for deer at, at my last house. But of course, with the good comes the bad. I, I didn't discover it till later, and I was wondering about it, and actually found some research that showed it. <coughs> the, the soap deters the deer, but as the soap, especially the homemade soap like I was using, but as the soap is exposed to the weather and the rain, and then it drips down onto the ground, well, that, that fat or that oil actually can attract bowls. So I've got voles in my area. And so in some of those beds that I was looking to deter the deer, I was acting actually attracting voles by using the, the soap. So it, it works, but you do have to be careful and be aware of all those other pests you might have. Like I, I talked about the mice in my tomato garden this year. You, you're trying to keep one animal out and in the process you're making it enticing for another animal that could be a pest. So just do be careful of that. So, so Chandy saying, I've been meaning to ask forever, why do people hang aluminum pie tins in gardens? What's it deterring? It's, it's, a, it's intended to deter birds. And so I think we talked about this last week, maybe the week before, where the mylar strips, you know, the shininess that's waving. I talked about having used old CDs that I hung in my garden. So the idea is that the flash of the reflective sun as the mylar strips or the CDs or the, the aluminum pie tins, as they're blowing in the breeze and as they're reflecting the light, the idea is that they're, they're going to, to keep the birds away because the birds are gonna see these things that are blowing around and spinning in the garden in practice, they really don't work that much. They might work the first couple days, but that's a big reason why people have the, the pie tints in their garden is to keep the crows off of the, the corn. And, and it's one of those things, I, I have family that comes from the Midwest of the United States. And I remember my aunt and my grandmother doing that with the pie tins. And it, it was purely as a, as a bird deterrent and mostly ineffective. So if, if you want to look like a Midwest farmer, put some pie tins in your garden. If you want to look a little more modern, put some mylar strips. But in the long run, I think the birds are going to just shuck it off and come in and enjoy your garden anyway. So, so as, as we talk about the, the Thanksgiving time and some of what I was, I was just mentioning, the gift giving idea is that we share a portion of ourselves with those we care about. And so, especially if you're of a certain age like I am, you've seen the commercialization of Christmas over the years. And all of this time of year seems to be so centered around the gifts. Kids nowadays just wanna get more and more. I like the idea of trying to make this season more about the giving than the receiving. And I think gardeners are among the most giving individuals on the planet. We share ourselves, we share our time, we share our seeds, we share our tools, we share anything we have to share. Almost always when asked, 
usually when we're not even asked. We're sharing our experiences and trying to help others become gardeners because it just is so cool to be a gardener, I think. So as you start thinking about the gifts and this gift time of year, do try to think about the giving and what it is that you can give. I tried to give you some ideas. I've seen some great ideas roll across the, the comments today. They don't need to cost anything. Or, especially if it's that big gift that costs a lot, when you receive it, it's a big deal. It's a life-changing kind of moment. All along the spectrum, if your husband gives you a greenhouse, you'll never forget it. If your grandkids give you a small painted pot, you're never going to forget it. Be that kind of gardener, the one who gives a gift because you want to give the gift. But if you can also add that little bit of creativity, maybe a little bit of artistic flair, maybe thinking outside the box a little bit, if you can do something to give that gift and make it more memorable, you're living on. Your legacy is being established. The memory of what you did, as we talked about 30 years from now, may still be fresh in someone's mind. And it all starts with just the idea that you have something to offer. You have something to give. You just got to figure out what it is. And you don't have to overthink it. It doesn't have to cost a lot. It can just be the gift of your time as a gardener to help someone else who also wants to be a gardener. And believe me, if, if, you, if you've been gardening and someone else that you know wants to be a gardener, they're already looking at you as an expert that they would like to learn from. So share your journal over a cup of coffee. Share your stories, share your seeds, share yourself. And hopefully this will be a wonderful holiday season for you and everyone else around you. So have a nice, safe Thanksgiving. Remember, I won't be here next Monday. If you're at the training or collaborator level for the Gardner Scott channel membership, I'll be right back in a couple minutes and we'll have another live stream for members only. As we move forward over the course of the next month in particular, there's going to be a lot of people, many that we don't even recognize, but a lot of people that can use our help and can use a kind word and maybe can use an extra packet of seeds. So start looking for those people that might be in your life that maybe you didn't see before. You didn't observe that they might have that need of just a kind word. And if you can offer it, please give it because you're a gardener and that's what you do. I'll see you in two weeks. Hope you're safe. Hope you're warm and keep that gardener spirit alive. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.